Hey guys, Noel here, and it is Sunday night, and I'm on spring break, and I am toning the rest of my silent manga contest entry, so be on the lookout for that getting uploaded via video manga form on the Noel Comics YouTube channel. But while I was toning my manga, I was hanging out with Santino, watching WrestleMania 2023. And uh, I just thought it might be fun for the sports and pro wrestling weblog section of the Noel Comics YouTube channel to do a uh, kind of a uh, casual review slash reaction to the pay-per-view from a lifelong professional wrestling fan. Now, as evidenced by the picture in the background, um, I'm a uh, Kenny Omega AEW fan grew up a WCW fan, so I never, like, hated the WWE slash WWF, but they were never, like, the brand I was rooting for. Often I was rooting against them. But that doesn't mean that I can't enjoy when they produce quality. And I have to tell you, um, I really haven't watched WWF consistently since probably 2017, I would say. Um, I just kind of catch it here and there. Uh, but I have to tell you, this WrestleMania, it was spread across two nights, I would consider the best WrestleMania I've seen um, probably since the WrestleManias with Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. Uh, that would be my reaction, at least to finishing the Sunday night uh, WrestleMania. Uh, the Saturday night WrestleMania, I would say, was fine. Um... I fell asleep during the Sami Zayn, um, Kevin Owens, Usos tag match. I thought the Rhea Ripley match was really good. I thought Dominic Mysterio was a funny bad guy. Um, and I was very disappointed that Logan Paul, who I think is the future of the WWE, did not uh, beat Seth Rollins because uh, Logan Paul is legitimately... Uh, a better fighter than Seth Rollins. He's more charismatic than Seth Rollins. And he's got more mainstream exposure than Seth Rollins. So I understand wanting to protect Seth Rollins. But I had to deal with my, my son Santino, who I'm sure you know if you watch the channel, was very upset that Logan Paul lost because Santino is, uh, you know, an aspiring YouTuber. He's got, you know, beautiful blonde hair, much like Logan Paul. And I, I can definitely respect someone with a quality head of hair. And, um, you know, a, you know Santino was, was very bummed, and so was I, because Logan Paul has got all the tools to be the future champion of the WWE um, and is probably the most charismatic person in the WWE. Um, so that was just kind of my take on night one. Night two, um, the three way slash triple threat match with uh, Sheamus and Gunther and Drew. Was he, what is he in WWE? Galloway or McIntyre? Um, I don't know. Uh, either way, uh, that match was really very good. And that was a match without a lot of acrobatics, but just with a lot of muscle. And I thought that was uh, very well done. And Santino and I were uh, really, really into it. And Santino was just running around the living room screaming. If you don't know, Santino's six, by the way. He's my son. Um, so let's see what else. Uh, not, not a lot of Ronda Rousey. I was a little disappointed in that. Um, I kept telling Santino, it's like, dude, you gotta wait till you see Ronda Rousey, because she is really good in the ring. She's, in my opinion, the best female performer the WWE has, and she, uh, she and Ken Shamrock, in my opinion, are the best UFC to WWE, WWF crossovers. Uh, but Ronda Rousey basically just sat on the outside of the ring as a heel, came in, did an arm bar, got the submission, and that was, you know, all she wrote for Ronda. Um, so whatever, she had good heel psychology, but we didn't get to see a lot of her stuff. Um, but the main thing I want to talk about for this, uh, you know, uh, reaction, synopsis, casual review, whatever you want to call it, uh, was the Cody Rhodes-Roman Reigns match. Okay, so as an AEW fan, I found Cody Rhodes to be pushing himself far too hard as a babyface onto the AEW fan base. And the AEW fan base is filled with smart marks uh, who tend to prefer heels. 
Uh, the other thing that Cody Rhodes did that was kind of dumb is that he basically, because he wanted to cater to the Wrestling Observer crowd, and this is something with all the EVPs of AEW, they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't. Be and this is what I mean. If they put themselves over because they've got all this momentum from Bullet Club and New Japan and Ring of Honor and Hot Topic, you know, if they put themselves in the spotlight as the centerpiece of AEW, which is what AEW was built on, was, you know, the Bullet Club, you know, Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, you know, Adam Page, um, you know, the Elite, you know, if they put them front and center, it's just like, oh, the people running the company are putting themselves over and, you know, therefore the the smart mark crowd will just crap all over them. But if they don't put themselves over, they squander their momentum and then they just kind of sit on the sidelines and, you know, feel wasted. And I think that's what happened with Cody is that Cody's like, well, I'm never going to wrestle for the AEW heavyweight title. So then he got sick of not getting the heavyweight title and went to the WWF. <laughs> so it's like, but you said you didn't want the heavyweight title in AEW and he's kind of, uh, you know, relegated to the TNT championship. Um, but Cody Rhodes uh, kind of, he not kind of, he really did not want to be a, a heel in AEW. And that led to him be, kind of shoving himself down the fans' throats and getting violently booed. Um, along with Randy, uh, not Randy, Randy Savage, Brandy, <laughs> Randy Rhodes. Um, and the other thing I should mention about Cody Rhodes um, is that he is, in my opinion, a much better heel than a baby face. So, you know, when he went, so he was just booed savagely by the AEW fan base, you know, and his, and his wife was also booed savagely by the AEW fan base. And they kept pushing themselves as these baby faces and doing these you know, family Christmas card video montages, which were not doing themselves any favors with getting over with the fan base. So eventually, WWE, in order to hurt AEW, you know, wanted to get the, you know, as many of the EVPs away from AEW as they could, and they got Cody Rhodes, uh, and he came back to much fanfare because... It's a novelty to have an AEW guy in WWE. A lot of WWE people are anti-AEW, um, especially the fans. Uh, so they want to see Cody Rhodes do well in WWE despite AEW. Some people are genuine Cody Rhodes fans and want to see him do well. So this kind of like storm of WWE smart marks who want to punish AEW... Um, WWE management who want to have Cody Rhodes be successful so they can snake away people like Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks uh, to do further damage to AEW because they're also executive vice presidents um, and Cody Rhodes fans. It's kind of this perfect storm coalescing to get Cody Rhodes, you know, over as a baby face. But in my opinion, um, the he was still pushing himself too hard in WWE and it just seemed very forced. Uh, it was very much like they were trying to replicate the Shawn Michaels boyhood dream scenario. And um, spoilers here, Cody Rhodes lost his WrestleMania match, which I actually thought was the right thing to do because it was so um, seemingly predictable that you were going to get the WrestleMania moment of Cody crying in the ring, holding the belt, looking down at the belt. And to me, it was... You know, and both as an AEW fan, not wanting to just have more shit thrown on AEW, <laughs> and also as just a wrestling fan who likes organic storytelling, um, I thought it actually made more sense for Cody to lose, because in my opinion, Cody was actually less likable than Roman Reigns in this match. Um, and this was the first time I'd actually, actually rooted for Roman Reigns in a match, just because I think he's really, really, really come into his own. I think, you know, this might sound kind of stupid, but... Um, I, I think Roman Reigns is kind of like Jeff Jarrett in the sense that he's a little bit of a late bloomer. You know, I didn't think Jeff Jarrett really hit his stride until he did that MMA gimmick in uh, TNA, Impact, um, and he got with Karen Angle. And I think Roman Reigns, like, this is really, he's really, really finally mastered, I think, that, that heel champion role. Um, and, I, and I think before when everyone was saying he, he had mastered it, it was kind of like, hype because they were so relieved to have him not be babyface Roman Reigns um but I I genuinely enjoyed his performance tonight as the evil heel and I thought he was very very good the match was extremely good with Cody Rhodes and and Roman Reigns it was the best Roman Reigns match I've ever seen 
and it was probably the best, and I think it was the best Cody Rhodes match I've ever seen. And um, I will say, I think it was mildly shady to kind of highlight, I don't know whether it was like nice, it was kind of like this weird double-edged charity slash uh, jab at AEW. They put um, uh, Brody Lee's son, negative one, um, who holds Brody Lee's TNT championship in AEW perpetually, um, front row with, with Cody Rhodes' family and, and, and mentioned him. Um, so I, I don't know. On the one hand, it's very nice to give him WrestleMania exposure. He's a kid. WrestleMania is the grandest spectacle in pro wrestling. On the other hand, it's like, oh, look to AEW. We have your martyr son and we're putting him front and center at our pay-per-view to make us look good and you not look good because we've got your EVP and now we've got your martyr son. You know, so it's kind of like, it was it's a combination of sweet and a little creepy, you could argue. Um, I don't know. But uh, anywho, um, I don't know what else to say uh, other than I think Cody Rhodes will eventually have to turn heel in WWE uh, because... Uh, he the cracks are already starting to show. I think he's clearly pushing himself too hard as a babyface. Um, and the only way for him not to turn heel was probably for him to lose tonight to have him gain more sympathy so he could keep the chase going. Um, because if he just got the belt, he would be booed by the end of the year, probably before the summer. Um, and I think that's just a fact because Cody pushes himself too hard. He doesn't want to be a heel, even though he's a, a born heel and he wants to play this babyface character. And the only way I think that's going to work to have him garner sympathy is to have the quality of performance that he had tonight at WrestleMania, which was phenomenal, um, and have him be chasing that belt. So people start feeling sorry for him and actually just really, really want him to get it and have it feel something that's like not canned and not super staged, and not super sappy. Um, also, um, I should note that I think there's probably some WWE ego at work as well here, because when I saw night one of WrestleMania, and I knew that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, these independent PWG tag team guys, won the tag team title and were really highlighted in the main event, I was thinking to myself, that's done to draw the young bucks away from AEW. And then the idea would be Cody would win the heavyweight title, and that would be done to draw Kenny Omega away from AEW. Um, but what ended up happening was K Cody lost for the reasons that I for the reasons I just highlighted, and I think here's the final one I'll mention is that WWE ego. Like, if they weren't going to let Sting beat Triple H, even though it made all the sense in the world, and WCW became the greatest wrestling company in the world and made WWF the number two wrestling company in the United States um, and just beat the shit out of them in ratings and perception and quality of product for, I would say, three years. Um, you know, it, and Sting was their homegrown guy and they wouldn't put him over. There was no way they were going to put an AEW guy over. You could also argue that as well as to why Cody lost. So these are just some of my thoughts um, on, uh, you know, WrestleMania 2023. Um, but I got to tell you, I have a, I've truly enjoyed that Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns match. Lots of great, um, you know, ring psychology, lots of great near falls. And it was a match that went long and I was in no hurry for it to end. It truly had that AEW fight forever style. Um, so good on them for being able to achieve that. And good on AEW for getting WWF to up their game. And good on Triple H or who's ever booking WWE to make it, um, you know, palatable and uh, enjoyable. And that's coming from me, who's not a very pro WWE guy. So until next time, guys, my name is Noel. You take care and I will see you in the very near future. For more video game reviews, wrestling uh, sports uh, reviews, and uh, all kinds of fun on the Noel Comics YouTube channel. Take care. Bye-bye.